Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to import a custom mesh into Unreal Engine 5.5's game animation sample. This tutorial will also work with 5.4 as that is when the game animation sample was released. Without further ado, let's get into it. What you want to do first is go to fab.com and download the game animation sample for the Epic Games Library. Once you've logged in to the your account you want to search up game animation sample and it's this one here uh, it will be an option to download and you know, say view in library and view in launcher so once it's downloaded view in the launcher you'll want to scroll down and set it to all which it is and type in game animation sample then you want to create a project so do that for this video. Animation sample two, because I did the test just now. And wait for that to download. Once it has downloaded, you wanna open it. Yeah, I think we got everything. Let's close that. Once it's opened up, it'll take some time for everything to load, but it should be fine to check this mess. And let's try it out. one a bit closer actually so we're gonna get all the animations from this uh, mannequin and put it into your own custom character so first we obviously need to get the character so I'm gonna go to uh, oh, also to get the content browser up shortcut you could either click here to get it up or press control and space at the same time so control space then click fab and once this loads you want to type in paragon because these are the characters that we'll be using. For this, I'm going to be using Shimbi because her clothes does a little glitch thing, which I'll show you guys how to fix in case one of these other characters do it. You'll want to make sure you're getting one that isn't like, you know, like an ogre or something like this. Because you can do one of these, but I won't be showing you how to do this in this video. So let's get this and add to project. Accept. And you want to select the version most closest to the one you're using. Uh, it's not got one for 5.5 which is what I'm using so I'll click 5.4 and add to project. Then you want to go to find your imported character. Uh, heroes, Shinbi, Meshes. And this was the one that we will be using for this example. If it does this you can either just drag it down and open it to get it like that or you could just drag from up here and put it up there which is what I prefer to do we can close this for now since we don't need that so this is oh this is the character we'll be using so first of all what you want to do is retarget the animation from the app sandbox character to shimbi so you want to left click and then right click and go to retarget animations then in target skeletal mesh you want to uh, click the drop down and type in shimbi or the name of your character click that and then when it's got them standing side by side you want to click export retarget assets and save this to the characters folder and click export it will automatically generate some retargets and you know ik i forgot what it stands for but no so you want to press click on it and press f2 and then type ik underscore shinbi or basically the name of your character and same with this one rtg underscore shinbi and then I'm going to press F2 and then press Control C to copy that name for reuse at a later date and save everything. Then we'll want to create a child blueprint, which is from here of, of the sandbox character. So click it, left click, right click, then create child blueprint class. It's called a CBP underscore Shinbi or your character name. Double click that to open it. Then first we will want to put our mesh in place where the mannequin is so click on mesh character mesh add and then skeletal mesh and I'm gonna name that Shindy so I don't get confused of which one it is then you want to find the anim class here and change that to abp underscore generic retarget then for the skeletal mesh asset just get the character that you chose and as you'll see it 
completely overlaps the mannequin so what you want to do is also if you want to slow down or speed up the camera speed you can either go up here and then turn it up and down or you can just right click and hold and use the scroll wheel so up to go faster down to go slower let's get back here so what you want to do is click on the mesh which is the mannequin and type in visible and turn that off and for this I'm going to actually type in visib which is nice and then we're going to go to visibility based anim tick option change that from always tick pose to always tick pose and refresh bones so we'll save that then what you want to do next is go to the content folder control space retargeted characters and abp generic retarget in here what you want to do is navigate to the variables on the bottom left ik retarget and map click that and in the default values click the drop down this is where all the retarget is for all the other characters and add a new element here you'll want to control v to paste what we named it which i'm just real i named that shibi name it shimbi one second what's the character is rtg underscore shim b do it control and then put that here and then you can either scroll and find it here or you could again copy and paste it and it'll come up there you want to compile and save that and then close next what you'll want to do is go to your shinbi character type in component tag add a new element and then again paste in your name then you want to compile and save and as you can see the animation has already started so this is pretty much all you have to do but if you want to actually change it from the basic mannequin what you want to do is click F8 and actually first what we need to do is actually open the game animation widget so you want to go in game and at the bottom here you'll see game animation widget you just want to walk over that it's lagging a bit all right let me increase if if it comes up with that on the side let me see if i try to get it again video memory over you want to come down here and type r dot streaming pool streaming dot pool size space and increase it to however much <clears throat> RAM you're willing to give it as you can see it says my current value is 3000 so I want to increase that to 8000 and then we we'll play again yeah it should be gone and that worked perfectly fine so now that we've gone over this we can see the game animation there so we want to add it here so when we're in game we can just click F8 and switch characters like that I don't think I changed it right, so r.streaming.pool size 8000, enter. Okay, so you want to open the content drawer, navigate to content, widgets, game animation widget. You want to zoom in, click on, for example, this one, this one, doesn't really matter. You want to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then you'll want to change it from CBP sandbox character retarget to CBP underscore Shinbi or whatever you named yours. And then as you can see, it will paste your character in there. Compile and save. Then why is it why is it still saying that? It must be bugging. That's fine though. I'll just if anything, I'll just turn down the scale a bit from cinematic put it to like medium or high, doesn't really matter. If anything, put on the so much texture in here. So click play, F8 on your keyboard, scroll down and you can find Shinbi, which is here. Press F8 again, and as you can see, the character is, you know, together. And as you can see, her clothes are kind of overlapping each other and getting stuck on each other. So how to fix that? You want to come off that, find her skeletal mesh or static mesh. Uh, heroes, Shinbi, meshes, skeletal mesh. Open that up. Then on the right side, you want to scroll down under the asset. Let me just make this asset details. 
scroll down until you find uh, mesh clothing assets underneath clothing open that then go to clothing properties cloth configs and then under this first one you want to put that down collision presets and tick this off from use of collisions on tick it off then save that then once you play the game you should see it no longer collides with itself and everything works fairly smoothly the only problem I say I've encountered is as you've just seen there the Z offset of the hand isn't very accurate so it kind of just goes on thin air I've not yet found a way to fix that but once I do I'll either add the link to my new made video in the description or you know well just you know yeah something like that um, if you have any questions about any of the steps in the video please feel free to ask in any questions in the comments and I will answer it ASAP now I'm going to explain a few of the things in the videos for anyone that may, might be new to this just so you get a better understanding of how to do this and implement this in other projects so we're going to start with the ABP sandbox character what this is in itself is where all the animation is being put and I'll cover how this pretty much works in a later video because it's slightly com complex but it's fairly kind of easy to understand it once you know it so the reason we are making or we are retargeting the animation is so it works with another character so as we did Shinbi it retarg as you can see there different heights and you know just different overall skeleton it makes it so the animations kind of work perfectly with this new character well not too perfect as we've seen but hopefully they will either fix that or I will show you guys how to fix that in a later video next the child blueprint class Shinbi the reason we made a child blueprint is to get all of the code so everything here and put it straight into Shinbi's character without having to write anything new so for example or actually another reason why this is quite beneficial is if there's something later on in the game where we want to change it with the character instead of having to go to you know this the next child blueprint class you can just change it from the parent which is this one so in a different project this could be applied let's say for example in that parkour game in our first video that I made I've got hanging lights on the scene I'm not sure if you saw it because I turned on the brightness for some strange reason so you couldn't really see everything but the hanging lights fall once you overlap the trigger box which and then once the light hits you it kills you when I first did that I made it so each light was its individual blueprint but this was quite bad because if I wanted to change anything I'd have to go to each individual one of the lights and then change from there but this way I net when I deleted it all and then remade it and made it so there was one parent blueprint and then the rest of the about 15 lights were child blueprints so if there's anything I wanted to change all I would have to do is go to the parent and then change it from there and everything would work perfectly fine also you might have noticed when I went to Shinbi and then I typed in visit instead of visible the only reason I did that was because when you type invisible you can only see this one but when you type in when you type in visit it also shows visibility based on anim tick options so it just saves a bit of time for this that's all really why I did that okay and that should be it thank you very much for watching the video like subscribe and hit the noti bell so you don't miss any videos thank you and have a blessed day